you know, technically I can do this show about whatever I want. Like, literally, if I decide on Sunday night that I think Monday morning's show should be about how it's weird that, like, when the Tiny Toons show had to figure out what to do with Montana Max as a villain, they settled on Evil Richie Rich because he's supposed to be the kid analog to Yosemite Sam, but there was no real preteen version of gun-toting lunatic as a character type in the early 90s, whereas now, if you did that show, it'd probably be like, oh yeah, Yosemite Sam, but as a kid, we know what that is, we just probably can't do it. Anyway, I could totally do the whole show on just that if I decided to. But I also actually like continued steady employment. So sure, let's talk about the new Star Wars trailer. <laughs> I mean, it looks good. Fun. I like the last two. Chances are I'll like this one. I like movies about Star Wars. Rey's jumping on the ship. That's nifty. I wonder if she's fighting the ship, or if she's, like, hitching a ride to go somewhere or do a thing. Lando's back. That's cool. Wonder what he's gonna do. Is that a piece of the wrecked Death Star? Looks like it. If so, is it the first one or the second one? Is that the Emperor laughing at the end? Sounds like him. <laughs> And now I guess they just up and said, yeah, it's him. I mean, beyond that, I don't know what else we're supposed to really be digging into about this. If anything, I was kind of hoping that, like it or dislike it, the previous film spending a lot of its running time re-establishing a sense that these works of make-believe aren't adhering to some set-in-stone mythic history, and thus can't be predicted, timed out, or guesstimated accurately, no matter how scientific you think your fan theory skills are, and that the new Star Wars anticipation game could morph back into a more wholly positive mode about seeing new stuff, new creatures, new worlds, new special effects innovations, pieces of music, getting excited, etc. But instead, I guess we're still clue-hunting to form opinions about what the story should be so we can make sure we're disappointed by what it turns out to be, no matter what, and trying to discern meaning behind titles that could literally mean anything or nothing, which, yes, I know in this case is partly the fault of the filmmakers in question because J.J. Abrams is annoyingly committed to participating in and or exacerbating the fandom metagame foolishness, which, look, I get why that kind of thing is a good idea to get people to go see, like, your camcorder monster movie that one time, but nobody needs an ARG to remind themselves that there's a Star Wars movie coming out, dude. And look, I get the complaining about this kind of thing is pointless because guesswork circle jerks about nothing until the movie comes out is the lifeblood of internet film fandom always has been and Star Wars is kind of the reason why because the infrastructure of the whole structure was built around the culture-wide anticipation for the prequels back in 99 and those were all about references and details and lore and answering questions because prequels are by definition retroactive world building and I get that it's futile to hope that Rise of the Skywalker discourse won't be dominated by breathless nasal fulminations about retcons, EU revivals, continuity. I, I just wish that it didn't have to be so really, really dumb. And when I say dumb, I mean things like this constant imaginary backstage fan fiction that certain online commentators continue to play up taking place, with effectively zero evidence, namely this notion that we're supposed to be on pins waiting to find out if and how much Rise of the Skywalker represents J.J. Abrams stepping in to fix the Star Wars franchise after the previous installment made up fortune at the box office, racked up some of the most positive reviews in the history of the franchise, but also made some political bloggers and unstable shut-ins on YouTube angry about stuff, which Abrams must somehow now be undoing with this one because reasons. I am so tired. I mean, setting aside that the existence of any behind-the-scenes drama like this has been both completely and explicitly debunked constantly in the intervening years between films, amid plenty of actual drama up to and including Colin Trevorrow stepping down as director of this one, Abrams coming on, Lord and Miller getting replaced on Solo, that film underperforming at the domestic box office, the Star Wars stories, side series going on hiatus in general, multiple TV projects going forward instead. Think about how little sense the Episode 9 will undo Episode 8 theorizing makes in context of literally everything else in reality. For this to make sense, you have to assume that Disney spent billions to buy Star Wars with the intent of spending billions more not only making new films but theme parks, hotels, and rides that are going to have to stand and last for decades based on these new films, but there wasn't anything resembling a plan for any of it after the first one, even though they explicitly put someone in charge of Lucasfilm to make a plan, and made the extremely controversial business decision to scrap the previously established What Comes Next continuity of the expanded universe to make room for that plan. Then you have to assume that plan or no plan, there was no discussion about any of this by either the director of the first film or the head of Lucasfilm with the director of the next film, so that director, Ryan Johnson, just did whatever weird thing he wanted on the most expensive cog in one of Disney's most important money printing machines, and then they went, oh no, it was different and made Shouty Men on YouTube mad, which in this alternate bizarro universe we give a shit about for some reason. Then came the day we knew we were finished. Gentlemen, Us Magazine just came out with its what's hot and what's not issue. Are we hot? 
We are not. And so to course correct, they were all, J.J. Abrams, come back and do a third movie that undoes all the stuff we definitely hated that Ryan Johnson did. Oh, but also, Ryan Johnson, here's a contract for tons of money. Please come back and make three more Star Wars movies for us. That doesn't make sense. I mean, we all get how stupid that sounds when you lay it all out, right? Now, look, much as I'm damn near morally opposed to playing the plot point prediction game with this stuff, it is honestly all one big unknowable. Do I think every point in The Last Jedi paid off exactly the way it would have if Abrams had written the direct continuation from Force Awakens himself? Not necessarily. But I have a feeling the big stuff is a lot less different than the conspiracy theorists have convinced themselves it is. More about theme and tone than specific details. Like, just one example, I get the sense Abrams conceived Kylo Ren and Force Awakens to be someone fan, specifically young dude fans who in temperament would resemble an earlier J.J. Abrams would just despise a wormy, millennial, emo boy wannabe Vader. And I think the fact that a portion of the fan base liked him, even identified with him despite how hard the film went on making us not, and even wanted Raylo to be a thing, was something he in no way intended or prepared for, but Ryan Johnson very much understood and knew how to lean into to interesting effect in The Last Jedi. Now, I could be wrong about that. It's a sense I get. And even if Johnson did take this or that plotline and some left-hand swerve Abrams never would have gone with, I don't really see him doing a whole movie of no, that was a lie, this is what's actually going on, undoing all the major stuff, because whatever else you can say about Abrams, he doesn't really strike me as a dick. Regardless, I feel like wherever we're gonna end up is gonna be close to where it was always heading in the first place. Sort of like how Lucas always wanted the Empire to get beaten by a primitive civilization, but originally it would have been the Wookiees instead of the Ewoks. Which is why I think people who are guessing that the Skywalker in the title refers to a title, probably like a group name, maybe that's what we're gonna call the Jedi from now on, and not somebody's name, even though obviously we're gonna see Luke and a bunch of other dead people again, because it's not like they can't not do a callback to the Ghost lineup from Return of the Jedi. I mean, that's a layup. And if you want a dopey prediction thing, fine, here's one. Kylo Ren won't get redeemed and or turned from the dark side because that is just doing Darth Vader again, and so far all the recurring motif stuff has had some kind of a twist to it. Instead, the Knights of Ren guys, who seem to be back and involved now, somehow, according to that leaked poster, will turn on him and be raised pupils and there's your new Jedi Order, or whatever we're gonna call it. Am I wrong about that? Probably. We'll find out in eight months. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture.